Okay, we're going to do number three out of uh, section um, 2.2. A lot of people had trouble with this problem. I've done it in class a couple of times, but I thought I'd do it again just so that you have a video on it so you can look at it more closely. So it says, use the limit definition of the derivative to find more formally what that the derivative of the sine of x is cosine x. So we're letting f of x be sine of x, and the limit definition says the limit as x as h approaches zero, this is what the derivative of function of x is, of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. That's the limit definition. Now we're letting f be the sine of x. So this becomes the sign, the limit as h approaches 0 of sine of x plus h minus the sine of x. f of x is sine of x and f of x plus h is sine of x plus h over h. Then, and that gets us to this, what they wanted us to show. Then it says use this identity, the sine of two angles added, is the sine of the first, cosine of the second, plus the cosine of the first, sine of the second. So we have the sine of two angles added, so this becomes the limit as h approaches zero of the sine of the first, cosine of the second, plus cosine of the first, sine of the second, and then we have this minus sine x, and all of this is over h. And we're supposed to get this to look like this. Well, I see a sine x times a quantity here. So I'm guessing that they factored the sine x out of something. I see a sine x here, not here, and a sine x here. So I'm going to get these two terms closer together. So I'm going to rewrite this as h approaches 0 of sine of x cosine of h minus sine x plus cosine x sine h. And in this, these two terms, there's a sine x. If I factor the sine x out of these two terms, I get sine of x times, see, sine of x times cosine of h, and sine of x times negative 1 would make sine x, negative sine x. And I still have this cosine x sine h. And that would all be over h. But I'm thinking ahead here. Uh, I'll, I'll do that. It's over h. Now, to go from here to this next step, we look at if we got something over h and something else over h, we can rewrite this as two separate fractions. The limit of this over h and this over h. And I can actually split it into two limits. Both of them are over h. 
And that's a rule in limits, that if you got a limit of two things added, this would be this over that plus that over that, you can split it into the limit of each part. And another rule in limits is that if there's something in here that's not affected by H, like 4 or sine X, that has no H in it, but is times the rest of the stuff, you can pull that out of the, you can factor out that. So we're going to get the sine of X limit as H approaches 0 of cosine of H minus 1 over H. So we're trying to find the limit of that times the sine of x plus in here, these have h's, so they stay, but that could come out. So it comes becomes cosine of x limit as h approaches 0 of sine h over h, which is what they've got here. And now they say, investigate what happens when H gets really small on this and really small on this. So, go to my calculator. And I'm going to go type in, see, i got to put it someplace where you can see it. There we go. I'm um, going to type in cosine of x minus 1, but I want this to be a fraction, not that p so clear. Let's start this again. Alpha y equals, make this a fraction, cosine x over x. And I want x, or h in this case, to be really close to 0. I can go to the table and make it really close to 0. Negative 0.001 or 0 0.001. Oh, what's going on there? Let's see. Did I type that in wrong? Oh, I forgot the minus 1. Silly me minus 1. Now let's look at those. Second table. And 5 times 10 to the minus 4, that means it's 0 0.0005 and negative 0 0.004. They're really small. And if I go even smaller, even closer to 0, 0 0.0001 and I get 0 0.505 negative and otherwise, uh, if I go, um, that was with a plus, go to minus 0 0.00001, and I get that. Or I could go to the graph, uh, zoom 4, and what does it look like it's doing as we get close to 0 for the x's? Looks like it's headed towards 0. And... If I even zoom in on that spot, it looks like it's headed towards zero. It disappears. There's a hole there because it can't have zero in there. But if I zoom in again, it still looks like it's going to zero. And if I zoom in again, it still looks like I'm at. So I'm zoomed way in, and it still looks like zero. See how far? I'm barely off of that, 0 0.00078. And if I go the other way, I'm at negative 0 0.00078. So I'm barely away, and it's going towards zero. So by investigating this with technology, with technology, I think this is zero. And now we want to look at this one. So now I'll go back and change this to sine and get rid of the minus one. And I want to see what this one's going towards. So I'm going to go zoom four. And it's headed towards, looks like 1. And I can go there and go zoom in. And it looks like it's headed towards 1. And I can zoom in again, and it looks like it's headed towards 1. So I think this looks like 1. 
So this sine uh, times this, which turns out to be zero, so sine times zero is zero plus cosine of x times one is cosine x. So it appears that the derivative of sine of x is cosine x. Derivative of this, using the limit, comes out to be cosine x. And then this last part here says, okay, do a similar thing to find out what the derivative of cosine x. Show that it's minus sine x. So I'm going to do that on the back. So we're going to do the limit as h approaches 0 of cosine of x plus h minus cosine x over h. And the cosine of x plus h is the cosine rule. Cosine of alpha plus beta is cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta from your trig class. So this becomes the limit as h approaches 0 of cosine x cosine h minus sine x sine h minus cosine x over h. And you can see my pen is dying. Let's see if I got another one here. There we go. So there's a cosine x in this and a cosine x in this. So I'll put these closer together. Cosine x cosine h minus cosine x minus sine x sine h. And I'm going to put that's all over h. I'm going to factor cosine out of this and do this over h. And I'm going to put this one over h. And I'm going to have the limit of both of them. So I'm going to do a couple steps together. I'm going to have a limit as h approaches 0. Cosine out of this would be cosine x times cosine of h minus 1. Cosine of this times this is that. Cosine of minus 1 is minus cosine x. That'll be over h minus the limit as h approaches 0 of sine x times sine h over h. And from what we just did, we know that you can pull the cosine x out and you can pull the sine x out of this one. And from our investigation, we already learned that the limit of this is 0. So we get 0 times the cosine of x minus, and the sine x comes out, and we learned that the, derivative, or the limit of this is 1. So we get minus sine x times 1, which is minus sine x.